Hey everybody, it's the mayor, and today we're going to be working on Relevant from Try Hack Me. Relevant is a room that I created recently and released over there on that platform. And really the whole premise of the room is for uh, people to realize and understand that you can't keep trying forever on the same failed attempts at things. Uh, eventually you need to go back to the drawing board and reconsider what you're looking at. So Relevant has a very obvious uh, but incorrect path towards exploitation, as in I gave you something that's too good to be true. And a lot of people really got hung up on this point. So uh, we're going to go ahead and run through Relevant today. We're going to show you the way to do that, how to successfully exploit the machine and root it uh, so that you can learn some of these really important lessons, in my opinion, uh, and hopefully take something from this. So without th further ado, we'll go ahead and begin by running Threader 3000. And we'll run against our IP address, so that's 10.10.47.235. Now yours is going to be different naturally. Uh, and you see some ports coming up right away. You see 80, 135, 139, 445. So this tells us there's a web server. Uh, and we also see uh, SMB, and then we get RDP there as well. So we'll let this run through for a minute and hopefully get some really decent results. And then we can run Nmap. Um, while we're waiting, we can go ahead and start kind of looking at some of these services, though, while our scan is going. So we'll open up Firefox and we will check out the web server first. So we'll go to 10.10.47.235 and see what we get. And we get a slow loading web page. Uh, and all we get here is a Windows Server, or Internet Information Services, or IIS service. So uh, this tells us that there's a web server running, but all we really get is a default web page, uh, which is okay. Right, so uh, while the scan is going, we can kind of start looking at that web server a little bit if we wanted to, but additionally we have this SMB open. So while we're waiting, we can go ahead and see what we can get from that by simply opening a new window and do an SMB client-l. Then we're just gonna go ahead and enumerate this IP address in SMB share. Mind you, we're not going to find anything here. We will find a web share, and we're going to find some information in it. Uh, but this is kind of where I purposely hung people up. So we get a web share, NT4 work, SV disk. So we have some more scan results coming back. So we have some of these higher ports, 49663, 49666, and 49668. Uh, these are commonly used for back-end operations within uh, virtual environments with like AWS, uh, you know, Amazon Web Services, et cetera. These are kind of ports that um, are running to help those processes operate. Uh, so hopefully here in a second we'll have this scan finished and then we can throw Nmap at it. So I will go ahead and run that suggested Nmap scan really quick. Then while that's going on, we can just kind of enumerate the shares some more. So. Uh, we're going to dump the dash L because we don't need a list anymore. And we can check out this web share. So NT4 WRKSV. And we know that we can check it out anonymously. So let's go ahead and try that. And you see that we can log in. So if we run dir, we get this passwords.txt file. And if we do, I believe it's going to be more passwords.txt, we should get some results back. And you see that we get these encoded messages. So if we split this terminal horizontally, uh, we can actually run these one at a time and we can decode them. They look like base64, right? So let's copy it and we can do echo and we'll just go ahead and paste that value and then we're going to pipe it to base64-d. You see we get this password and this username Bob password123. Um, these are bad credentials just to be completely honest. Uh, I put these here purposely, right, to catch people uh, looking at something that's too good to be true. Now, when the box first released, we got a lot of people looking at these. They were trying to log in via SMB. They're trying to log in with PSExec. They're trying to log in with Evil WinRM, et cetera. And they weren't getting anywhere, but people kept trying and trying and trying. And that's the entire point of this challenge, right, to show you that the try harder mentality only goes so far. Eventually, you have to try something else, or you need to adapt to your resources and your and what you're seeing. So, 
if we do this one, we're going to get some more junk credentials as well. So if we echo that value, and then we're going to pipe that out to base 64D again, you'll see that we get Bill, and then we just get another Juana Man 42069, blah, blah, blah. Uh, again, another bad username and password. And just kind of to show you that really quick, we can do the Bob one quick. So we'll do evil win RM. And then we'll do I, and it's going to be 10.10.47.235. U is Bob, and P is going to be this P A money must sign, money sign, W zero R D one, two, three. And go ahead and let that run for a minute. Um, and show you that this is just not good credentials, right? And at that point, do a couple checks, you know, make sure you're getting things correct. But trust in what you're seeing. You know you're putting the password in, right? You know that you're trying to do it correctly. So trust in what you're seeing and know that, hey, if this isn't going to work, it's not going to work regardless of what you try. Um, We'll let that run for just a second. And then we get our Nmap scan back. So we see we got port 80. It's a high S10. We're not going to find any vulnerabilities with that version, most likely. Uh, we have Windows Server 2016. Um, we get the target's name is relevant. And then up here, obscured in these higher port numbers that we were talking about, I actually put a second web server. And I did that because oftentimes people will see these ports and then they'll just completely ignore them. And as you see here, we still don't have any results back from Evil WinRM. We're not going to get any, so we're just going to go ahead and cancel that out. Uh, so you see that we get a port service here uh, with Windows uh, IIS. So if we come over here and we check that out really quick, 49663, you're going to see, yes, indeed, we do actually have a web server. But we don't really have anything else to go off of. So we need to enumerate these web servers a bit. Um, in you know the interest of time, I'm going to tell you outright that we're not going to find anything whatsoever on the uh, port 80 web server. But we can show you kind of what we're looking for here with uh, the challenge by going 10.10.47.235 with Dir search. You could also use GoBuster if you want. Uh, we're going to use all extensions. We're going to exclude ports 400 and 500. We're going to do one level of recursiveness, and we're going to thread it at 100. And go ahead, and we need to use a word list. Uh, so we're going to do root, desktop, uh, directories, and we're going to use directory 2.3 medium. And we're going to go ahead and let this run out. Now it's going to take a few minutes. Uh, and I know this, and I say this because I put the... Uh, the directory at the way end of the directories uh, of the directory list. And again, in the interest of time, we're just going to go ahead and uh, we'll let that run for a minute to show you that it's running. But I'm also going to go ahead and I'm going to CD to desktop directories. And we're going to go ahead and cat directory 2.3 medium. Then we're going to grep out uh, the directory we're going to find, which is going to be nt for wrksv and you see that we find that in here so just to show you that we find that directory and that it's legitimate we can come over here and do nt for wrksv and we're not going to get an error it's actually going to be a legitimate web server right so if we go back to our smb and we quit this out and we see we have this passwords file uh, and we see that the share's name is also nt4wrksv. So if we go back to our web server and we do passwords.txt, you see that the web share or the web server is actually using the same directory as the SMB share that we have access to, uh, which is quite interesting, right? So if we have access to this SMB server, what if we created a new file, so we'll just cd to our, um, we'll just go ahead really quick and we're going to echo this is a test. And then we're going to output that to test.txt. And then if we put test.txt, we upload it. And then if we come to our web server over here running, we run test.txt. You see that this is a test, right? 
We're going to let this run back here in the background because I do want to show you eventually that it does find that, uh, that subdirectory. But you see that we have uh, upload rights to the web server using the SMB share. So knowing this, and keep bouncing around the wrong windows here, knowing that we have access to um, this share into the web server, what we can do is we can create uh, a reverse shell situation, right? And knowing what we do about Windows IIS, oftentimes uh, one of the things you can do is uh, use ASPX, right? IIS is one of those formats that it uses is ASPX. And so what we can do is we can create a reverse shell using ASPX. So we're going to go ahead and do that quick. And we're going to use, uh, we're going to go Windows Shell Reverse TCP. And we might have to do X64 Shell Reverse TCP because we're using a Windows server, so we can assume that it's probably going to be that. Um, we can come down here. We can select ASPX. We can do our output. And we're just going to do rev.aspx. And so you see here we have... Uh, that we need to change our IP address to our listener or to our local uh, ton zero uh, on on try hack me. We use ton zero for our local interface. So we have 106256, which is my IP address, I believe. So we can copy this now, and I'm going to switch over to well, we'll just do it right here. So if we paste that and we run it here in a minute, we'll get uh, that ASPX shell will drop here in this directory, and then we can put it up here. Uh, and additionally, what we'll do is uh, start a netcat listener on top of it. So just bear with me for one moment while MSF Venom does its thing and generates our, our payload, and then we can upload that and see uh, if we're able to successfully um, get a reverse shell through the web server. And it sure is taking its sweet old time today. Not used to MSF Venom taking so long. This is interesting. Okay, so we see that it saves reverse.aspx. So if we put rev.aspx into the web directory, and then if we nc nlvp53, and we use common ports as much as we can. So we saw that we use port 53 here. Now if we come back to our web server, and if we do rev.aspx, we should hopefully get a reverse shell uh, once it loads. So let's hold on one second here. And the web server might be kind of having some problems here with a dir search, so we're actually going to cancel that out for now, and see if we actually get this uh, this command execution from the shell. So, and we do. So you see that by running rev.aspx here in the browser off of the web server, we do get a reverse shell. So anytime we land on a machine, we want to do some initial recon, right? Kind of get you know, figure out what's going on on our machine. So if we who am I, uh, we should see that we're IIS app pool, default app pool. So in the last few months, um, a vulnerability was discovered and disclosed called print spoofer, which essentially is a vulnerability in Windows Server 16, 2019, and Windows 10 that essentially allowed service accounts to, on occasion, be able to access the system user. Uh, Microsoft thought that this was important for certain service accounts to be able to do. So if we who am I priv, the way they do that is through the SC impersonate privilege. And typically, if you saw something like this, you might consider a potato attack uh, because we can impersonate, or you might consider incognito. If we try a potato attack, it's going to fail in this case because I've disabled DCOM, which is kind of a workaround for uh, combating potato attacks. Additionally, we don't actually have a token to impersonate as this user. But what we can do is we're going to close our share for a moment. 
and we're going to CD desktop tools and then tools again. And we're going to open a Python 3 listener. So Python M HTTP server, and we're going to do that on port 80. And we're going to come down here and we're going to CD to C drive users. Or we're going to go C drive inet pub, and then we're going to see what's in there. And it should be www root, which is our directory. So if we CD www root, if we dir, we can actually see our files in here uh, in our share. So we see the nt4 work sv. Now I'm coming to this directory so that we can have a directory uh, that we know we have permissions out of. So the inet pub directory, uh, your app pool user is going to have access to. So if we use cert util url cache dash f http colon slash slash 10.6.2.56. And if we grab print spoofer, Dot exe, which I have in my tools folder. And then if we type in print spoofer again, this is what we're going to output as. You're going to see that we're going to go out, we're going to grab print spoofer from our local machine. And we get an error here, but I don't know if it's legit. It is uh, an error. Okay, so we need to try this again. Um, an internal error occurred in Microsoft HTTP service. So alternatively, what we can do is we're going to use the SMB client to log into this. And then we can just put print spoofer into the share. So if we CD to NT4 work SV, we're going to see that print spoofer is here. So print spoofer is really, really easy to use to escalate our privileges. So what we're going to do is we're just going to simply type print spoofer.exe. Then we're going to do I for interact. Then we're going to do dash C for command. And then we're just going to do CMD. And you're going to see that it's going to find the privilege. It's going to find a name, or it's going to have a named pipe listening. It creates the process as a user. And then it upgrades our shell. So if we do who am I now, you're going to see that we're NT authority system. And that is relevant, right? So I apologize for not going through the entire DIR search. I don't want to keep you here for 15, 20 minutes just watching me do a directory bust. However, you do see here that we find it. And again, the moral of and kind of the goal of this entire challenge is the try harder mentality only goes so far. There are so many people who take a test like the OSCP and they try harder, try harder, try harder until they have no time left. And it's because of that mentality that if you eventually try hard enough at what you think is right, you're eventually going to get where you're going. And that's just simply not the case. You can't try harder forever. Eventually, you need to adapt to your findings and try something else. And again, in this case, we see that we have a share that has credentials that are just bad credentials, but there is a good share, and it links to this web server here. So not only do we see the importance of trying something different, we also see the importance of doing full port scans and looking at our entire attack surface. So I hope today that you've learned something from this walkthrough with Relevant. Uh, there is also an associated write-up for this if you prefer to read it. It is on the Try Hack Me uh, Relevant page under write-ups. But I really, really hope that you learned something from Relevant today. I really enjoyed building this box and having the time and opportunity to do it. And I hope you really learned something as well. So until the next walkthrough, uh, I hope you have a great day and stay safe. Take care.